Hey, and welcome back to the Emlyn In The Mix show, season five, episode two. And we have got another banger of a piece of hardware in front of me. Yes, I have the Korg MPS-10. Sorry to straighten it up there for the camera. Overhead cams and all of that jazz. And we're gonna have a little play with it today, play with the sounds. Now I need to pre preface this straight away with I am not a drummer, I'm a complete noob, okay? I, I'm enthusiastic about drumming and actually enjoy drumming. I sort of got into it about one or two years ago, but I cannot drum to save my life. So I'm not coming here today on the show to say, hey, I'm this amazing drummer. Listen to me and listen to my rhythm. I need to preface that because I know the type of people that might watch this video are gonna be like pro drummers and they're gonna be like, how do I incorporate this into my drum? kit setup so i am not that i'm nothing short of drumming I, if you want to teach me how to drum if you want to become my teacher great please do that but i don't need in the comment section Ooh, this guy can't drum he doesn't have any rhythm Ooh. all right so let's not do that today let's not do that on this video i should say and thank you for letting me get all of that out of the way actually i have to say something fun so my friends over at noise gate i'll put a link down in the description uh, section down below. My friends at Noisegate, there is an incredible, like one of the guys that works there is, in my opinion, a very, very good drummer. And he even had the said in his review, which I'll put the link uh, for that review of the MPS 10. Watch that after you've watched my video today. He even says, I'm not a fast drummer. And I'm like watching him and he's like, Brrr. I'm like, whoa, okay. And he had to say that because he probably got some heat in the comment section about his speed of drumming. So now that we've got all of that out of the way, yes, of course, this is YouTube. It can be a visceral place in the comment section. Just need to make it very clear that I cannot drum. And we're just gonna be looking at this piece of hardware. So with all of that out of the way, let's get into the goodness. My gosh, that was, a, that was a long explainer, wasn't it? Now I've put my mic in a very precarious position, but I'm gonna need to use my mouse just to quickly do the overview of what is the MPS-10. So this is a pretty exciting product coming from Korg, being that they don't actually have that much in the way of percussion instruments, although they have made some pretty innovative percussion instruments in the past. Namely, I wonder if I can go back here. They had the wave, uh, wave drum, Global Edition and Wave Drum Mini. So these two here were sort of like, you know, breakthroughs in, in the uh, drumming sector. But uh, they also have some rhythm machines here. They just released this actually, the KR11. Uh, being that NAM also is at the beginning of next weekend, there is going to be a crap load of new products coming out over the next few days or getting announced. In fact, I've even noticed just in the last two days the amount of new announcements um, from music uh, companies, Korg alike. There is a lot happening right now. So next week's show, make sure to tune in because we're probably just going to cover the NAM products and just talk about what my favorite sort of products are. We'll just discuss that uh, as we do here on the show. But anyway, this is, you know, in the line of drum instruments, you can see this is really only the third sort of product that they've got other than those rhythm machines. So this is sort of like a complementary drum pad uh, sampler that you can have in addition to your drum kit. So you can have it with an acoustic drum kit or you can have it with an electronic drum kit. I myself have an electronic drum kit. I've got the Roland TD-07K, which is like the entry line uh, Roland uh, electronic drum kit. Uh, they might have updated it. I believe there is a TD-17, which I really want to get. It's like a slightly bigger drum brain with more, you know, internal memory and that sort of thing. But anyway, so what we have here, we we'll jump over to overhead cam and I've put tropical scene behind this bit of palm tree action visuals going on there. Gosh, can't seem to get this straight. We had so many technical difficulties getting this overhead cam going this morning, but it seems to be all running pretty good. So you've got 10 pads. So you've got your six main pads here, which are your bigger pads. And then up the top, you've got CC continuous control. So you can do things like filters and other CC MIDI messaging. Okay. Um, so it's absolutely beautiful layout. Now, actually, 
Or, you know, I was actually considering getting the Roland SP, SPD SX Pro. But once this, I, I never got to play with one. I did want to get Roland. Roland, shout out to Roland from Emlyn in the Mix. If you want to support the channel, hit your boy up. Was keen on getting that. But Korg have been a big supporter of the channel. And we got my hands on the MPS 10, which only dropped now, what, a month or so ago. So a seamless symphony of playability and features an indispensable companion for drummers, a digital percussion relation, the ultimate partner for performers. And that's why I had to pre preface this whole video about how I'm not really a drummer because I know that y'all that are watching this, y'all are going to be, a lot of you are going to be drummers and uh, yeah, you're going to want to see some actual drum action. So I'm going to do my best to just go over some of the sounds and show you some of that CC MIDI messaging performances, that sort of thing. But I do want to cover also uh, the looper on this thing, which is a lot of fun. And I will have a timeline down below. I probably should have said this at the start of the uh, show. There'll be a timeline down below if you're watching us on YouTube where you can skip ahead to the section you need to get to. So the MPS 10 is a harmonious blend of playability and features. Whether you're in the studio performing live, the MPS 10 stands ready to fulfill your drum percussion needs with its captivating array of exciting and useful features. And I think what blew me away about the MPS 10, I think the thing that really got me was the, the looper and the fact you can load your own samples. And for me, like as a beginning drummer and just learning, having, you know, make being able to create sort of my own sort of rhythms and beats that I can play on top of with my electronic drum kit really appealed to me. So this really is sort of aimed towards, or, you know, it's really put towards your live performing drummer. This is what this unit is really aimed at. So that's why I'm guessing I'm probably going to get views from those type of people. But for my regular viewers, this might be interesting. So your instant re results, preloaded kits. It's got a heap of kits. So you got 100 carefully created kits on board, each comprising 10 instrument pads, and they await your command as you dive into the MPS-10. The musical journey commences, and the moment your fingers grace the pads, igniting a galaxy of sonic brilliance. I'm reading it back off the website, of course. Don't be like, he just reads it off the website. Ugh, of course I do. I'm giving you the information from the source. What do you want me to do? You want me to go to your neighbor and ask your neighbor about the MPS-10? Come on. Come on, guys. Get your stuff right. All right, so the artistry of looping. Okay, this is the thing I want to show you. This is what I'm going to attempt to show you. Uh, so elevate your performance with the incredibly flexible and powerful four-track looper. Jump back over the overhead. So the looper is down below here. Uh, very simple to use. Um, so revel in the dedicated looper effects. So you got a looper effects here and crafting intricate looping phrases that will inspire your creativity and your audience with synchronized settings that ensure flawless playback across the track. So the cool thing about the looper is when you create a loop, uh, you can overdub, of course, and then say you create a loop on uh, looper two, so you've got four loopers here, so you create a loop on one, then you create a looper on looper two, you can have them so they sync, they always sort of play in sync. Now, it doesn't as far as I know, and unless someone knows, they can leave a comment in the comment section below. This unit does not have quantization, and I was really hoping it does because I'm a machine user. I come from the world of machine where you can just quantize everything. You make a bit and quantize it. This doesn't have that, so you actually have to be good at drumming to get a good sounding loop, which I'm not. So I apologize for my little loop attempts that we're going to do today, but yeah. You, you're sitting with your boy here. He's a, a learner, beginner drummer, okay? this is And this is giving you my impressions from a learner, beginner drummer, how I feel about this thing. So anyway, we synchronize settings that ensure flawless playback across tracks and the ability to export each track as a WAV file. Your creative processes will go even further than your real-time performances. So what that basically means in a nutshell is I believe you can export, so you can create your loops and you can export them as WAV files. So that's actually pretty cool. The other thing about this unit is there wasn't many videos on this unit, which really surprised me. So I really hope that my viewpoint and my perspective on this unit is kind of like a little bit different to the ones that are already there because the ones that are there sort of seem to be like professional drummers. And I feel like there'll be 
few sort of beginnery type people like me who are sort of interested in this device and want to incorporate it into their studio setup. And it is honestly a lot of fun. So with the CC, so you got the CC pad revolution, which is these, again, it's the four up the top. So you can have continuous control or command control, I think uh, CC can be known as as well. Uh, so those four at the top, you can apply like filters or effects or something like that. So embark on a journey of sonic manipulation with the four visionary, deceptively powerful CC pads. Top four pads of the MPS-10 can be used as CC pads, detecting the striking position with incredible precision and thus allowing for intuitive control of effects parameters. So yeah, a lot of fun and I'll, I'll attempt to show you that today as well. There is an online editor, which I found kind of interesting. You have to use, or well, I have to use, sorry, because I don't know, God forbid Safari, uh, but Apple doesn't like it. Uh, but Google Chrome, uh, you can go on a web browser and get in the back end of this unit, connect it by via USB, and you can sort of change the pads or the settings and the parameters and stuff and then save them as a default. Anyway, really cool system to expand on your, you know, particular setup or your drum kit setup. It has got uh, on the back end, which I, I really didn't, <laughs> I didn't plan for that today. Like we got cameras everywhere. We just don't have the back. Look, you've even got me here. I did that so you could sort of see my studio and the whole setup. Um, I didn't have, I don't have a look at the back here. Let's see if we can get a photo up here just on the connectivity. We don't have one. But anyway, you can actually... You can have trigger in, trigger out from here to either your kit, your setup, your other drum kit setup, or vice versa. And it's got MIDI in, MIDI out, all of that jazz um, and pedals and that sort of thing. So it has effectively, I believe, I didn't pull it up here and I apologize for that, but I believe you got up to, you can control up to 15 uh, individual uh, drum sounds with this even though it's got the 10 pads so you can expand upon it actually i might have said that but let's just have a quick look here. i'm i'm rambling and we'll get to the sounds in a second again that's why we have the timeline down below let's see if it says it here what does it say so embark on a sonic odyssey with dual triggers and terminals accommodating up to four triggers and pads via a y-shaped cable allowing for a total of 15 sounds yes 15 sounds within one kit and unleash the full spectrum of drumming artistry with a single unit empowered by the preloaded kit featuring a dedicated bass drum as a trigger connected tone pad 11 all right so there you go that's cool so you could i wonder if you could hook up like a, a kick drum electronic kick drum to it sounds like you could pad 11 so elevate your performance redefining your sound and craft unforgettable musical experiences with the mps 10. again there wasn't many videos on this but hopefully i'm covering so yeah they've got yeah they have they've got pad 11 connected which there must be an output on the mps 10 and look he's got a, a little kick drum there that is so sick and it looks like he's got a snare drum yeah that's connected too to one of the pads so yeah you can trigger that is kind of cool you can have a little setup like this and have everything you need you can have your toms up there anyway let's get into it so the unit itself is pretty intuitive um so we can click on uh this little uh encoder here which is pushable and that's kind of like a nice quick way. I think because of the green screen, you're not going to see that I'm actually scrolling through the presets really quickly there. Or you can use this plus minus, which gets us through the presets, which might be a bit better for the camera's sake there as well. I will, I'll pop my overlay there so you can see that I am a real person, not a robot. Um, <laughs> so actually I want to show you something. So when you go through your presets, up the top here, you can see that little line uh, and that means that this particular kit has um, CC MIDI messaging. So um, uh, it can either be like you've got a looper going or there's some kind of filter or effects. So this particular one here is a drum bass one. And if I show you that real quick, got my drum, handy drumstick. So there'll be a looper or a sound here. So yeah, here we go. So really nice, really good rhythms. And if you need, uh, like me, definitely need a metronome for something like this, so it's quite fast.
So anyway, yeah, you get the idea. That metronome is super loud in my headphones and probably loud for you guys, and I apologize for that. Um, but you get the idea. You got your metronome on board, and you could play along to that. Now, just in addition to the fact that I'm not a good drummer, the way I'm sitting too right now is really horrible because I'm actually below the unit, so I'm going to have to try and get on top of it. So that actually sounds really good. So this is a drum and bass um, percussion. So you've got your snares usually down here. Um, as I said before, I'm pretty sure you could trigger this to an electronic drum. Up the top here, which my overlay is covering, which I'll turn that off, is a little uh, snare roll. And you got other snare rolls here. Little bass drops. Okay, so they put the crash up the top there. Really cool sounding kit. Uh, let's go through a few more kits. So this one here has no CC MIDI messaging, but you got a ballad percussion kit. Kind of nice. And the other cool thing is when you change kits, you can hear the sound is still decaying from the previous kit, which is really good for live performance. If you're freaked out by that, you can press sound off, which will sort of like a panic button, we'll get rid of that. I've got Congo and Bongo. I may have to actually stand up to play for you guys today because this is actually really horrible playing like this. Uh, let's see what else we got. Put my overlay on. We'll go through a few sounds now. Wonder how it will look if I stand up. Oh yeah, there we go. Now I have to say the actual pads themselves feel really awesome, really responsive, and COG have done an amazing job with the materials on this. Big industry, here we go. Listen to those toms. <laughs> I really like that kit. We'll go through a few more. And again, I'm gonna have to stand up for each time. I really can't play like this because I'm so low. This is all snares, that's cool, snare side. So this would be good as an addition to your already like setup that you have uh, in the forest. Ah, oh, cool, we got some ambience here. So you could have like this, gosh, it looks like it's going off. So we've got a nice little ambience. And of course, they are velocity sensitive. It's a sound off there. They are velocity sensitive. Uh, you could hear I was sort of getting different sounds like out of this one. Like when I hit it harder and depending on where I hit the pad as well. And they're super quality sounding samples. Like I, This thing is a beast, honestly. Sounds really good. And again, I hope this perspective gives you a nice idea. Okay, so we have a filter on this one. Okay, we got a sound. Oh, there we go. So you can see how the filter works. I'll turn my overlay off. So it's working on the uh, top CC pads here. So you get the idea. So you can filter things in and out. This is a nice tempo for me. Oh, 
Oh, wow. Alright, we get the idea on that one. Oh, it's got a little, oh man, we're going totally off when I'm hitting it. It's, it's moving around a bit. Now, you would have this, like you would have it on a stand um, and you can get a little, there's actually a little thing you can buy for it that hooks onto the bottom of it so you can actually put it in like a proper drum tripod thingy. Um, but as you can see, a hell of a lot of fun. I'm going to show you, I'm going to show you a uh, looper in a moment and just show you how that works and we'll just sort of create a little loop uh but we barely scratched the surface on the kits again 100 kits on board plenty of sound i think it had like 3,000 samples or something crazy it's got 30 no correct me if i'm wrong i hope i haven't got this wrong but i believe it's got 32 gigabytes of internal memory oh cool if you need that electronic drum roll really hard to play when I'm sitting down. Anyway, I do want to sit down transpose. Let's play with this. Make a loop on this too. Right, let me try this. This would actually be, what is that though? I don't know what the CC is doing on that. That'd be a good one to do, show the loop thing off. And what's the tempo? 120, so it's easy. A little bit fast, actually a little bit fast for me. This is a cool kit too. I like this kit, here we go. Really nice, we're getting camera shakes and all. Uh, boogie funk. Look, as you can see, all super quality. I like that. I like that um that bass drum. The, now the fact you can hook this up, the fact that you can hook this up again, like you've got in the picture there in the background, getting weird exposure in my green screen. But the fact you can hook that up to another, you know, electronic drum kit, and you can. Like, I'm excited by the idea of having a kick drum and having that hooked up to this and you can just play along with it. Come on, give me a break, guys. Give me a break. Back to our tropical scene. All right, here we go. Let's go through some more kits. And also, just quickly, I do want to say it's pretty easy. I know the screen is small, but it's pretty easy to get in the back end. Like, you just click utility, you've got all your setup here. It's got some really good settings for your metronome. You can change the sound. Um, like, the at the moment, I think the metronome was super loud. It's pretty loud. I mean, I kind of need it that loud when I'm playing. Um, you've got a bunch of kits here. You can also get in the back end of the instruments, samples. Maybe we can do a bit better of a deep dive on a future video. I really just wanted to sort of give you my thoughts and an overview on this. And I, I really want to show you the looper as well. I love the looper and that's kind of the main reason I really love this unit. All right, cool. So I'm going to attempt to do a little loop here. We've only got a one bar loop. I'm not sure why it's not letting us go more than that, but let's put our metronome on and hit record here. So it'll start as soon as I hit the pad, ready? Oh, actually, I press the wrong thing. So there's our little loop, but we'll try again. Here we go. Oh, it's one. Okay, cool. Hang on. Not bad. Here we go. One, two, three, four. One, two, three. All right, so this is what I meant by you have to be good, okay? So now we can overdub on this. Let's overdub on it though, ready?
Not bad. So we've overdubbed on that with this one kit. Probably take that off there. So we got a little loop here. Now we can actually add something else here. So we're going to add another kit. Well, actually, let's have a listen. All right, we'll record down here this little snare thing. Have a completely have a completely different kit. What about tropical? And then we can actually just turn off a loop. See how they synchronize? Oh no, you can't see him on the green screen. That's hilarious. All right, let's see. It's all in the same tempo too, which is cool. We can actually overdub a different kit. We can overdub a different kit onto that other kit that we had on this one. So we will dub, overdub this in. You can hear my horrible rhythm. This will be synchronized. So we have two loopers going now. But you can see what I mean, a lot of fun, super simple to use the looper, and obviously you need to be good at playing because it's not going to quantize, it just ain't going to quantize for you, for you. There's no quantizing at all. So you can hear just from that example there. Let's make another, we've got two more loopers I haven't used because I've been doing a bunch of over, over, I can't even speak, overdubbing here. Um, let's go through some more kits though and just see, maybe we can, te tiny techno kit. So we could make like a little techno beat here. Um, we can actually speed it up for that. I'll attempt a slightly faster groove and we'll record onto this one. So there's my bass drum. I mean, it's okay, it's not great, I'm not amazing, right? So there's my little loop. We we'll work out what will go good with it. That's cool. Here, yeah, let's try that. That's cool. That's a little synthy thing. Try that too as an overdub. Ready? How cool is that? Now we can go searching for something else. What about this? Anyway, you can see a lot of fun can be had. Just pop the metronome on and get stuck into it. That is the looper. I've done my best there. I told you my rhythm is not 100%, but you get an idea, pop the metronome on, have some fun, and 
that is honestly a lot of fun. I'm going to have to leave it there because I'm, I'm going to go overboard. I'm just going to keep playing with this thing. But what do I think of it? A lot of fun, especially even from a beginner's stance. Yes, I'm not an amazing, incredible drummer. You didn't come here today to see me just doing all these crazy fills and all cool stuff. But you got an idea of from a perspective of someone who maybe just wants to make some grooves. Yes, I don't know why it doesn't have quantizing on board. Please, Korg, if you're watching this, maybe it can be a software update because I'm sure you could manipulate these samples via MIDI. That would be really cool to add quantization because I'm not always on point. But, I mean, maybe it's going to make me a better drummer or maybe I'm completely wrong and this does have quantization on board. You definitely do have the synchronization. Now, did make, obviously, I made two separate loops at different tempos. So if I was to play this back at the same time, we can do it. It's just going to sound like a cacophony. They're not going to be in the same tempo. Shall we do it? This is going to be quite horrible. Let's have a quick listen before we end the show here. Have a listen to these four uh, loops in different tempos. <laughs> Somehow it sounds like they're, they're sped up. How does, hang on a second. How, okay, so does this actually time stretch it? Let me have a look, let me. No. Unless I didn't change the actual tempo, but for some reason the tempo is synced and it's all working. I, I, maybe I didn't change the tempo. I'm not 100% sure. Anyway, guys, thank you so much for joining me. I'm still learning about how to use this unit, but that is the MPS-10. That is my my sort of look at it here and what I think about it. And yeah, it is a lot of fun. It's really quality build. Um, there's a lot to discover with it and it's quite easy and intuitive to use on the back end. I absolutely love it. Uh, thank you to Korg for letting us check this unit out today. Almost forgot, and actually I haven't forgotten because it's still here. Big shout out to our sponsor today, which is of course Output. They have the Arcade uh, Sample Plugin. I'll have a link for it down below, the Ultimate Sample Plugin with over 64,000 playable samples and 1,300 instruments. Uh, you can check that out in the link down below. But yeah, MPS-10, thank you so much, uh, Korg. Again, this has been a hell of a lot of fun. I've really enjoyed it. I hope you've enjoyed the show, episode two today. Next week will be all about the NAMM show. I'm sure you will have heard quite a bit about the NAMM show, what is happening. It's the biggest musical industry or pro music industry uh event of the year very exciting lots of new releases so you hear lots of new releases over the next week or so some cool little devices coming out but we'll have some cool gear too in the studio which we'll be able to show you in upcoming episodes especially after now all right guys that's going to be it for me today thank you so much for joining if you enjoyed this video make sure to like it and hit subscribe if you haven't done that already all right guys i'm out with all that said and done peace out boom Hey, thanks for listening to the Emlyn In The Mix podcast. Here, you will find all the latest in music technology, software and hardware, interviews and more. Also, don't forget to check out the Emlyn In The Mix YouTube channel today. Till next time, keep it real.